I'm scared. Now we're getting a hailstorm. The beef tenderloin. The name already says it, it's the king of tender. And today I'm going to show you how to prepare it like a pro. Most of us know the beef tenderloin as a small cut, a little piece, like the filet mignon. It's one of the most prized steaks in a restaurant. But it doesn't start out that way. It starts out like a larger cut. The chef cuts it up into steaks and then he cooks it and serves it for you. But let me show you how you cook a whole beef tenderloin like a pro. This is 2.2 kilograms of the most tender cut of a cow. Most of the times it comes in a package like this, it doesn't have the train on anymore and the fat is being cut off and all the chef needs to do is just chop, 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 cut it into steaks, put it in the pan, put it in the oven and it's done, he can serve it. We're going to take this beautiful Simmentaler beef tenderloin out of the package and take a closer look. With one big slice we're opening the package and we're taking our beautiful big beef tenderloin out of it. Before we can start our work we need to pat it dry with a paper towel. Closely inspect the meat for your start and then the first thing that you want to do is take off that muscle on roast. It's actually one of the best parts of the beef tenderloin. Once that's done, you want to take off that silver skin, otherwise known as elastin. You can see that the butcher wasn't on his A-game when he cut out this beef tenderloin, because we don't want to see a cut like this. But hey, don't let it stop you. Work your way around it and let it disappear. Once all of that silver skin is gone and our tenderloin looks good, it's time to recheck on our muscle on roast. Make sure you get all of the elastin off as well. And it's a little bit of fiddling but it's well worth the work. Now we ended up with three beautiful cuts. The whole tenderloin, the muscle on the roast, and a little bit of that leftover chain. And the final step in the process is cutting off our tail, our Chateau Brion, and then we end up with our filet mignon. You might wonder why I cut up our beautiful tenderloin in all of these cuts. Well, the reason for that is each individual cut has a different amount of tenderness and a different amount of texture. So this is what we're keeping in mind when we're cutting it up. Also, it means that you need to cook them for a different period of time. So if we would put it together, maybe flap back the tail, tie it up, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be cooked like a pro. Let's fire up the barbecue and see how it's done. The coals are lit up, the barbecue is set up with a direct and indirect zone and we put a griddle in. It's searing hot, so we're ready to start cooking. Normally I would use the reverse sear technique to cook a steak, but with the tenderloin I definitely don't want to do that. Number one, we don't have the fat to build up that crest with the reverse sear. Number two is when we apply the reverse sear and we cooked it to a certain temperature, we might need a longer time to get a crust on so it would overcook. That's why with a beef tenderloin you start with the sear first. Now we got a beautiful sear on our tenderloin, we're placing it indirect and lowering the temperature in our barbecue. We'll let it come up to a temperature of 52 degrees Celsius, and then we'll place it on a cutting board and let it rest. Now that we've let it rest a little bit, we need to get out the salt and season it. If you're a big fan of seasoning afterwards, like I am, you can season it while it's resting, but I like to wait with my beef tenderloin until it's rested, sliced up, and then sprinkle on a little bit of salt. Let's cut it up. I think you can always tell how good a chef is by the amount of crust that he builds up on his beef tenderloin. This is the way to build up that crust and it's important. Don't worry about the center, you're gonna get it right. That's not the challenge, the crust is the challenge. It's not her turn yet. 
This looks so tender. Tenderness test. Whoop. Oh. Oh. Wow. Super tender. Mm. Without crust, this steak wouldn't have texture. If you never had a steak before, and this is the first thing you would ever taste, oh. you would be blown away. I'm scared. Let's move on. Now we're getting a hailstorm. Is it safe to continue? We're machos. And that's why we're making nachos for machos. It's a joke, Marcin. And I like to start by making some guacamole. I'm taking four really ripe avocados. Cutting them open, taking out the pit, scooping out the flesh, putting it in a bowl. And once we got all of the flesh into a bowl, we're going to cut it down with our spoon and mesh it fine. Now we need a little bit of flavor to go with our avocado. So I'll take three, nah, I'll take two red hot chili peppers and I'm going to slice them fine. Then I'll take one red onion, chop it fine as well. And this is roasted garlic. It's already roasted and it is delicious. I chop that fine and add it to our mortar. A pinch of salt and then you can start mashing it fine. We want every little last bit to be crushed. We don't need it to turn into a full puree but we want all of the flavors to burst out of their cells. Now mix that up with our avocado and it should look like this. Oh, and for the people that like cilantro, I'm gonna add a little bit of cilantro. Don't judge the people that don't like cilantro or think it tastes like soap because it's genetic. They can't help themselves. Personally, I really like cilantro. So let's do a quick taste test. Oh yeah, now that is what I call a guacamole for machos. And with that good tasting guacamole, we're going to need some nachos. Pour it in a bowl, dress it up a little bit, and put the guacamole on. Once you're sure that everything looks pretty macho, it's time to start slicing your steak. And I would love to open this puppy up so everybody can see we have a beautiful cuisson as well as a good crust. Sprinkle on a little bit of sea salt, dress it up with a chili pepper and some cilantro leaves. Now look at that, isn't that a beauty? This plate looks like it's worth 50 euros, man. That's not the point. The point is, it looks freaking fantastic and it is amazing. If you make your own tenderloin for 50 euros, you can get the whole thing and then some. You might want to do this yourself at home and make your own machos nachos because it looks freaking amazing. Let's just give it a try because <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting crazy hungry. I'm looking for the words. I actually taste the cilantro. I'm really struggling here. That's a really good option. It's like crunch. Wow. Creamy. This is just an amazing steak. Spicy. I'm saying that while I'm eating yeah, chips. chips. Yeah, chips. You're eating chips, dude. Salty. Flavorful. And... Bam, 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 bam. I would love this with tequila. It's like a freaking machine gun of flavors. Oh man, the guacamole. I'm still processing here. I'm like one of those old slow computers, like. I'm not giving anything to your family. You know, I like to blend flavors. I like to build it up and mix it all together. And I think that's, you know, what I always admired and the chefs that I look up to and follow, those were always the ones that build up flavors. And that's, that's what the dish, dish does. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit proud of myself. I did a good job, I think. Besides the nachos from machos, I really would love to talk about that tenderloin because the tenderloin is the real star of the show where it normally wouldn't be. If you buy it in a restaurant, most of the time it's a disappointment because you pay so much for your tenderloin and then you get something, well, a lot of the time sous vide cooked and, and with a little crisp or crust or no crust. And that's such a disappointment. So I hope that everyone takes it to heart when they're cooking their tenderloin. The crust is one of the most important things. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with a cut of really tender beef that is just tastes like steaks for old people. I'm super happy with the end result and I'm super happy with that tenderloin. So if you guys enjoyed it and you enjoyed this explanation on how to cook your beef tenderloin like a pro, give us a thumbs up and a comment down below. You can can leave a long comment. That's that's a possibility. You can make it. You can even make it bold. Just put it between these little stars. Thank you for watching.
big thank you to our patrons and Juju members. You guys freaking rock. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, please smart luck. And keep on grilling. Tasted good, right, Marcia? Yeah, but the problem is now you have to share it with your family. Yeah, but that's a problem for you. I like to share it with my family. You don't like to share it with my family? It's all going to be gone. But it's fine. We can make another portion. Yeah, yeah. We, we got the other parts left, so we can make some more. Yeah, maybe. It's going to be fine, Marsha. Don't worry about or it too much. Or do we have any other videos coming? Yeah, we're going to be cooking some more, but for this week we're finished. So... C can we have a sneak peek? But, but Morrison, let's be real here. Your belly is showing a little bit. No. It, people are not asking if you're pregnant yet, but it's coming. Oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah, well, cool. you don't have a six-pack.